Hello. Hi. What's happening? <clears throat> oh, nothing much. It's Sunday nice. morning. Oh, you're feeling lovely. Yeah, we both have allergies, and uh, <laughs> we're 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 gonna be talking about movies. Tis the season. Is my exactly. science is killing me? Hey, DS man's in the chat already. Welcome back, DS man. Thank you for hopping in. Well, hello there to you. So, Pedro, I yes. do believe. In 1994, you and I were finishing up Skew. Yeah, that was a long time ago. When we were learning how to make movies. And we're learning how to make TV and make movies. And then my personal favorite thing was that, is that, you know, went to school thinking that broadcast communications was the way to go. And then as soon as you step out the door, nope, it's multimedia. Oh, I know. Well, like, remember, like, when we were in school, the only computer in the whole department was uh, the DOS computer. You could barely type a term. Yeah, the thing that we that 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 we took it apart and painted it to look like a uh, it was made out of stone. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That let's not forget the Amiga. The Amiga coaster. Yes. Well, that yeah, you were like light years beyond the rest of us because you actually knew like deluxe paint and you could animate. Yeah, reality's caught up to me. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> I know. I remember my first job out of school, like a year down the road or so, and I walk in and they're like, "Yeah, have you ever used an Avid?" I'm like, uh, "No." Have you ever used an iMix Video Cube? No. <laughs> yep. well, have at it. Start to learn. All of a sudden, like I had to fly a computer. Like we left right at that transition. Yep. You know, we everything was tape and film, and then we go out in the real world, and it's all computers. The DS man asks if we're fans of Francis Ford Coppola. Well, uh, yes and no. I'd say yes and no. No, because he's not a fan of ours. So screw him. Yes, because he's a great filmmaker. <laughs> How's that for an answer? There you go. We yeah. should probably introduce ourselves for people watching this stream after the fact. Uh, that's true. Oh, my God. I got to put that one up. Holy cow. Wait a minute. I am so rusty at this whole. Uh... Wow. 50th anniversary of the conversation with Gene Hackman. And happy birthday, Francis Ford Coppola. You know, it's funny before we get into the whole 94 thing. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Spoiler Pete. And I'm not, not and spoiler I'm here in Moe's, in Moe's Tavern. Moe's is back. That was Moe's your classic backdrop. Yes. I would be Geek Time Prime, Keith. I call myself that because I kind of started this wonky adventure. So, um, oh, Coppola. Yeah, when we were talking, I think we were talking offline last time. Like, what's going to happen to the industry Yeah, when all these auteurs are gone? And it's so weird because we were talking about it. And then all of a sudden I was listening to, I think it was the 430 movie podcast. And they started saying the same thing. They're like the movie industry is probably going to die. Very likely, it's gonna or it's gonna turn into something completely unrecognizable because now you got this 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 scrapbooking way of putting movies together, and for some reason, movies have to cost three hundred million dollars a pop for no yeah, for no no sane reason on the planet. Put together by committees and yeah, exactly, and just you know, oh geez, that doesn't work. Let's dig out the other stacks of footage that we have. Right. And maybe we can make another movie out of that. <laughs> uh, yeah. How, how that it actually just... came around is beyond me. I mean, who, whoever thought that was a good idea should be shot. And, and the, you know, just the pillaging of intellectual property and yeah, brands and you know, franchises and just it's sad. I mean, I should I I should have thought ahead. It's on my phone, but I have that graphic of like this year's big movie releases. Yep. And there's only like four original movies that aren't part of a franchise. It's really sad. And the audience that they're gunning for, the you know the the younger audience, they don't care. You know they 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 don't want to see. They're just fine watching it like this. Exactly. No yeah, they, yeah, they, they don't want to see. They don't want to see Ghostbusters. They don't want to see. 
you know, they, they want to see stuff that's new to them. I mean, you know, Dune is doing so well because it's got it's got two recognizable names and it's it's new to them. You know, for some reason, Godzilla is doing really well and everybody seems to think, oh, that's brand new. Well, that appeals to the one and a half second attention span. Yeah. But but, you know, it's funny because I, I worked with a, a young girl. She's now she's probably about 25 or 26. But at the time she was in her early 20s. And she told me she can't watch anything like prior to the year, like 1999, 98, because the effects were so bad. And I'm like, well, that's, like she wouldn't watch Back to the Future because she couldn't stand the effects. And I'm like, but you're missing the point. Justine was her name. I'm like, it, it, effects service the script. They don't make the script. It's Although today. these days, these days, I would argue that it's the inverse. But it's, it's all about they they set up these giant. Let's like, well, we can have this great set piece with these great effects, and let's just write something around it to get us there. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 you know the the it's not even done by by script writers. It's done by you know conceptual artists who you know paint. Hey, let's have Godzilla and Kong fighting in in zero G. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> you know, here's a great painting of it. And so yeah. let's 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 make a let's make a, a story center around that. Yeah, that's pretty sad. But 1994 was not like that. And before we get into 1994, I'm wearing my Deep Space Nine shirt here. Deep Space Nine, the Niners. And I just want to point out that I don't know which day this week it was. Maybe it was April 1st. I don't know. I haven't put Pluto on in like maybe a week and a half, two weeks. There's a Deep Space Nine channel now. There's three Star Trek channels. Nice. DS9 got its own channel. How about them apples? That's, that's pretty cool. So all you DS9 haters, suck it. All right, 1994. We were youngins, Pete. We were just bright-eyed, bushy. The far children. off year of 1994. All excited about what the world was going to offer us. Yeah, we were the world broke. Of cinema. We were. We were still broke. We were broke. We were broke. Nothing much has changed. But you know, when I think of that year, I mean, it's amazing that year the the releases and when you and i kind of look just looked at a list over just quickly we were like oh my god like there's there's movies on here i forgot mm. existed so i don't know how you want to structure this do you want to go by genre and just talk about a couple of the big hits from each you know like horror and comedy and drama throw a dart throw a dart throw a dart well i have this chart we're going to pull up at the end we're going to rank our 10 favorite we're not going to say they're the best movies and we're not going to say that you know they're the, the most critically acclaimed they're just going to be our personal top 10 sure or 11 really because i have honorable mansion well 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 real quick look who's here hello it, it's con guy can we list our favorites so come uh probably not <laughs> Well, there is a Coppola produced movie that came out this year in, in 1994. That is true. And, you know, he didn't direct it, but he had grand ideas for, for uh, uh, resurrecting <laughs> a, a, a genre that hadn't been, that was, that was pretty much dead and buried for quite a while. He didn't really succeed, but he, you know, the first two entries were certainly, uh, were certainly, uh, iconic to say the least yeah yeah so anyway i'm looking at this grid there's all these movies i mean i could go like right across the top row i mean there's probably a few that i'm sure there's many we haven't seen but um for example three ninjas did you see that no no about, i i missed i missed three ninjas how about a troll in central park well, nope, can't say I've seen that one. All right, we're off to a fabulous start. Airheads with Brendan Fraser and Steve Buscemi. An Adam Sandler, my favorite. And Adam person Sandler. In the whole, and oh yeah, my favorite is comedian in the whole world. No, I, I I think I deliberately avoided that one. What about Angels in the Outfield with Danny Glover? That was actually on not too long ago. I I, I or was it on the internet? I don't know. I I came across that recently and i still haven't seen it disney's blank check 
Baby's wow. Day Out. How about Baby's Day Out? I saw it through Red Letter Media's uh, review yeah. of it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my exposure to Baby's Day Out. However, me. yeah, they did make it sound like a really funny movie because it was basically it was a live action Looney Tunes. No, seriously, like the baby like face plants on the sidewalk and oh yeah, like, yeah. the baby gets like physically abused and it is okay. Like, yeah, lots, might, of, lots of wily coyote gags. Yeah, I might have to try to watch that sometime when I have some time. But um, yeah, if you haven't seen the Red Letter Media review of Baby, it's a Mr. Plinkett review of Baby's Day Out. I highly recommend. It. It's hilarious. All right, we're getting we're getting to some better ones. How about the uh, Chunking Express? What? Now? The Chunking Express. Chunking Express. Is that about uh, fat, fat people on a train? <laughs> I'm just getting the ones we haven't seen that I'm oh, sure we haven't seen out of the way. Uh, was this Colors of Night with Bruce Willis? Nope. Yeah, like we said, it's a banner year for movies, 1994. Yeah. Trust us, we, there there are movies we have seen. We're just getting these all out of the way. Yeah. All right. Now we're to one that was awful that I know we've both seen. Beverly Hills Cop 3. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, I think I, I saw that probably the year it came out, and I haven't seen it since. God, but it's awful. Yeah. It was not one of the, it was, it was not one of the shining examples of a sequel being better than the original. It is not. No, it really missed the mark. Uh, Blue Sky with Tommy Lee Jones and Jessica Lange. Have you seen that? No. Uh, this is a critically acclaimed movie that I did not see, um, but I know it was huge at the time. Bullets over Broadway. Sounds and, familiar. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it, but it does sound familiar. This, it, I, it, is that a, an adaption of a, of, of a stage show? I believe it is. How about Ace Ventura, Pet Detective? There we go. Now we're getting into the, <laughs> into the real stuff. Yeah. Now, this was interesting because at the time, In Living Color was running on Fox. And that was a show, I, I think, again, it was like ahead of its time. Yep. And, you know, for all these people who say that, like, you know, uh, there's been no... Uh, what do I, I want to say? Diversity, if you will, in entertainment... This was an all black comedy show that I loved and it launched the careers of like Jamie Foxx, the Wayans, like J -Lo. Yeah. And there was a rubber faced white guy. He was the token white guy. He was like the only white member of the cast That's who, right. uh, That's who was hilarious. And he kept, he did the fire marshal bills. Like I swear his face was made of rubber. His name was Jim Carrey. And perhaps you've heard of him. <laughs> perhaps you've heard of him. I think he's made a name for himself. Um, yeah, this, this, was his, this. this was his 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 big breakout, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And uh, what a breakout it was! And it was just Jim Carrey unleashed. I I I I'm guessing that most of it was improv, because and I think specifically of that scene where he's in the and he does the, the William Shatner bit. Yes. you know he was just so. Over, over the top, saturated, and, over and, the and, top and, with his body movements, and the, but he's got such good. control, you know. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he's very, very, very good at the physical comedy. And yeah, uh, yeah, which which you 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 either get right or you don't bother. Right now, it, right for physical. What did you think when you saw this movie when it came out? Oh, I laughed my ass off. Oh, so did I. I laughed so my I. ass off. You yeah, know, it, it was. Uh, it's it's problematic now. <laughs> Everything's problematic. Everything's problematic now. But yeah, but you know, but but references to then popular movies. Uh you know, it was no, I laughed my ass off. Yeah, and of course I'm being a football fan with Dan Marino in there and the I think they were taking off the the ninety one Super Bowl three years earlier. The Buffalo Bills were heavily favored to beat the New York Giants, and it came down to a kick at the end. And the kicker missed the kick. And a lot of it was blamed that the laces were in, were not facing out. So laces the whole out. the whole thing laces out, right? I uh, made you cookies. Laces out, just like you like some. Of course you can. 
So I'll keep an eye on the chat. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling here. Um, so yeah, and then he had a second movie that year called The Mask. Ah, uh, yes. An ILM, an ILM post-Jurassic Park wonder. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, you know, where he, uh, <laughs> again, they let loose with both the CGI and Jim Carrey's talent. But yeah, I agree with that. Oh, He's absolutely. definitely a physical comic. Absolutely. Um, and it, we, it was it, it was different at the time. It was needed. Um, we had just come out through the 80s where we had uh, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, the stand up Jerry Seinfeld. It was like the stand up era. Right. Yes. And then we get back into this a kind of vaudevillian physical comedy with the Pratt Falls and the, the goofy faces and the, yep. um, just amazing. And we, if you're a fan of Jim Carrey, I I recommend the Sonic the Hedgehog movies because they're a perfect vehicle for him now. He's he's back. To, he's doing his Jim Carrey bit in the character he plays. Oh, look at that. You've got a yeah. Jim Carrey. Botnik is it's right in his wheelhouse and it's perfect for, you know, and Carrie's he's in his sixties now, but he can still pull it off. Um, so, uh, another great movie that came out that year that got lost in the shuffle, I think clear and present danger, Jack Ryan. Yes. This was know. after Harrison Ford took over. Yes. It was Harrison Ford's second. second Jack Ryan. Think, yes. Yeah. He, uh, he, he, he got quite a bit of action. Oh, for, uh, we'll, we'll get to there. that. We're we'll get there. to that. Uh, but yeah, that was, it was, uh, for, for a CIA analyst, he certainly saw a lot of action. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I watched, I've all of them on Blu-ray and I watched the bonus stuff and Harrison Ford wanted to bring a little more action to the character. He thought, you know, after hunt for red October that, you know, yeah, he's a CIA, CIA analyst, but he's put in these precarious positions. He should be able to fight his way out of them a little bit. That's true. So, um, that one's kind of weird, too. It, was, it reminds me of the James Bond film, License to Kill, a little bit, that came out like four years earlier, okay. where you got the drug, drug cartel, and, you know, it was a little different, but I like it. Uh, we had D2, The Mighty Ducks 2. I bet we did. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's, you know, it, it was it's the bad news bears on ice, and That's it true. followed the same kind of formula, you know, just kind of. Yeah, the, the, the underdogs and they eventually win and you know they all come together and right. Uh there was a Johnny it all together. <laughs> there was a Johnny Depp vehicle that came out that year that I got dragged to that was just painful. I hated it. And maybe it's because of my age at the time. Um Don Juan DeMarco <laughs> with Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Oh, it's so yeah. Cool. No, it's I, I I think I've seen that one. My girlfriend dragged me to it. Uh, of course. Yeah. yeah. No, I it's I think I think I've seen it in the years since, but I'm drawing a total blank. Could be the pickled eggs. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, you know, it was a it was a romance film. Yeah. Where, you know, Johnny Depp's trying to woo this woman and. Uh, anyway, uh, disclosure with uh, what's his face, Michael Douglas. Disclosure. I didn't see it. Yeah. Discl Can you tell me about that one? Nope, I can't because I didn't okay. see it. Double Dragon. Didn't see that one. Either. Nope. Eat, drink, man, woman. I didn't see that one either. But here's two that I did see: Dumb and Dumber. Oh, another Jim Carrey vehicle. Yeah, no, Jim Carrey had three hit movies in one year. That's and, that's unbelievable. Yeah, he was he was absolutely on fire. I think the the highest paid celebrity and and until recently, I think. Oh, did he? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Special thanks to Alice No, my girlfriend at the time, for dragging me to that painful, painful movie. Um, <laughs> there weren't no explosions. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. So Dumb and Dumber. Well, I what I loved about this is putting Jeff Daniels next to him. Yeah, because he wasn't known for comedy, was he? No, I mean, he was he, not. He, he had done a few lighter movies, but he hadn't done like flat out comedy. 
flat out comedy. And one can argue upstages Jim Carrey in this film. Um, yes, less is more. Yeah. Well, Except, the, of course, for the toilet scene. The toilet scene and the snowball fight. That's pretty good. But um, out of the three Jim Carrey movies, this was my favorite. And I didn't really want to go see it. I had my fill of Jim Carrey that year. Mm -hmm. And my friend Sean kept saying, no, you got to go see Dumb and Dumber. You'll you'll piss your pants. And I watch this film at least once a year. It is it's it's hysterical. Oh, it's, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And they tried a prequel and a sequel and neither neither really captured it. And it's no, this is another one of those like Ghostbusters lightning in a bottle. Whatever happened had to happen made that Agreed. movie the way it was. Agreed. And this also was a, the Farley brothers had written the script. These two guys out of Rhode Island, they were, if I memory serves, they were like postal workers, right? Yes. And they wrote the script and it got, and they sold it, but they insist they had to direct the film, but they had no idea what they were doing. So they, I remember they're saying like the crew just carried them. They're like, we'll make the movie for you. Just tell us how you want them to behave. Right, 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 right. You want right. them to act and we'll, we'll do everything else, all technical stuff. And, and you're right, very, it is lightning in a bottle. Very accommodating crew. Very. And I don't know if, if, if one, if, if you'd, you'd, you'd be able to get, like, yeah, we're gonna we're nobodies, but we're going to write the script, and you want to direct. The fact that the studio said, okay, is is uh, amazing in and of itself. Well, and very, I think they, very accommodating crew. They benefited from, it was, this was the time of the auteur. The early nineties, you know, we had all these, you know, the Tarantinos, Kevin Smith, Spike Lee, uh, John Singleton, like is one after the next of these auteurs. They were actually like giving people a chance yeah. with their own material to do it. Right. I mean, Kevin Smith and his, his, I mean, he made the whole thing and sold it, but, but right. the, after that, he was you know able to do what he wanted much to, <laughs> maybe they shouldn't have let him do that, but, um, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, Dumb and Dumber and the Farleys, really, they got so lucky at the time. Um, and it was another one of those things where you read these success stories. I and mean, back then, you know, you and I coming out of school trying to break in and you're reading, God, these two mailmen in Rhode Island yep. wrote a script and got to make this movie and it's a big hit, right? It gave us hope. It, it gave us a sliver of hope. Yeah. Uh, right next to that, I see uh, a little movie called uh, Clerks. Clerks, speaking of Kevin Smith, yes, a a genre inspiring uh, film. I think uh, how how many independent slacker movies came out after that? <laughs> Four thousand one hundred and ninety seven, by my count. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that that was. Um, I since my opinion of Kevin Smith is definitely gone down a bit but at the time you know the fact that he was able to to pull this together with nothing but the resources that he had you know maxing out his credit cards and everything like that and you know using using uh or am i thinking of uh Robert no, Rodriguez, you're right. but no you know like like using no, scraps right. of scraps of like the end of the end of film canisters to get to get the thing shot yeah yeah he was buying the what do they call those i forgot what they're called jesus it's been a long time because that's how i did my film projects in school. You bought the the tail and the tails, you know. The tails, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean to to have that much of belief in what you're doing to put yourself into a, a lifetime of debt basically at 20 yeah. let's see he's a year younger than me so he was probably at the time 22 or 23, right? That's right. Um, that's that's a huge risk. Um and it paid off. I mean it was just that time it was a great time it really was and the window was we didn't realize it then but the window was very small we to break in like that because it, it slammed shut pretty quick yep. so, uh, yeah snoochie boochie <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> yeah so and you know i was inspired truly inspired you know, oh absolutely I, I think everybody at our age was like you know hey we we can we can do it too except Yeah, you can. No, you absolutely could if 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 the pieces fell into place and the, and the timing was right. right. Um, I, you know, last time I mean, I'll, we tried, 
you know, right. I sat down and wrote a very, uh, I wrote my poop and fart joke script and in, in uh, how many, like eight drafts of it too. I think it was pretty funny. Um, and then we spent two years shooting it twice because the cast failed. The cast wrote it. Yes, I remember this. Yeah, we had to, because the, the cast kept dropping out. So we had to reshoot entire segments. And as we had to recast out. the whole thing and start over. Yeah. Yeah. But it was better the second time around. Well, yeah, uh, we, we worked out all the bugs. But at the time, getting post production was difficult because it would cost like three hundred dollars an hour to go to a post house. That's like right. We didn't we didn't have the ability to sit home in our underwear with a computer and cut. You had to go somewhere. So exactly, uh, yeah. It was we were, uh, you and I were doing rough cuts at like three o'clock in the morning because we were allowed to do it after hours. That's right for free, but we had to do it in the middle of the night, which was. Yeah, Killer. but uh, yeah, we we decided to shoot it on video, which was unheard of. Well, that was the only way I could afford to do it. Yeah, yeah, but um, editing video was not only was that incredibly expensive, but we but you you were just at the cusp of of the computer age, so correct. So we had to import all the footage onto the computer, which was basically just for one scene, and it would fill up the hard drive. Yep. Uh, edit it. Ex yep. Had to have the scene done in tape. one night. Ex export it back to tape and then delete everything mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, bringing in a hard drive with, with everything already pulled on there. Yeah. And I think our first cut was almost three hours long for our comedy, which like, okay, we got to cut this in half. And I think by the time we got down to a usable, uh, you know, uh, cut a usable length cut, uh, a couple movies had come out with all my same jokes in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, it just, it took, I was like, what's the friggin' point now? Yeah. And it's too bad because in 1999, I got to sit down with Kevin Smith in New York. It was kind of cool. We went to this, uh, it was the screening of Dogma. It was a preview screening of Dogma. You know, he, you know, he does his dog and pony where he likes to talk about himself for three hours yeah. and then show, show the movie. And he's talking and he's answering questions and he said, who really wants to watch this? And at that point, I didn't want to watch it anymore. You sit there that long. It's like, I don't want to watch a movie now. He goes, whoever wants to watch the movie can stay here and watch it. And whoever wants to keep talking can have a conversation. Follow me into this library. We went, there's a library. It was at Lincoln Center in New York. Okay. So I went into the library. Only like 10 of us went in there. And we just kind of sat on the floor. We all sat on the floor in a circle and just you know hobnobbed and talked and afterward i cornered him and talked to him for like 20 minutes and he i told him what i was doing and he's like oh that's awesome he's like yeah 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 he's like i want to see it when it's done and he brought his producer bob hawk over the guy who bought the movie wow. bought clerks brought him over said bob give this guy your card i have his card somewhere um and he's like just call us when it's done and we'll 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 see what we can do with it and i was like all right and that was in 98 or 99 when we had already finished shooting it and then right, uh, but, but by the time it was probably the year 2000 i think by the time like we were like fuck it what's the point now all we're gonna yeah, do exactly. is use the ripping everything off now you know yep it's too bad i mean was, i you know hats off to doug melanson and lou fapiano who helped us write the script the script was great i thought but yeah and you were outstanding as the lead. You were so freaking funny. Thank you. Thank you. And, and you brought so many like improv, so much improv, like the general dingus stuff. And like, I just think of some of that. We were shooting in that restaurant. Remember that lady? This woman gave us that restaurant to use. That's right. It was a breakfast nook and she'd close at what, like uh, one o'clock in the afternoon? Something like that. Give us the keys and let us stay as long as we needed to. Yeah. And um, it was great. But uh, it's too bad. But oh well, and now here we are talking to you, fine people. But it did teach me one thing. What's that? After that I never wanted to make a movie again. That's right. It's 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 grueling, man. It is grueling. And I, you know, everybody was great donating their time. Basically, I just had to feed everybody, and you know, didn't it was it lot. was. A lot of a lot of gears had to align to get that 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 movie made, and it was definitely we had just 
we had help in the in, in the right areas. We had we had a lot of people who were willing to volunteer their time. Yeah, because it was it was you know we had expendable time at that point. So you know, we and we had we something like I think there were like forty eight or forty nine speaking roles. Wow. Yeah, that was we had you know extras and you know some of the scenes didn't come out the way I envisioned them for you know. You put out a call for extras and four yeah, show up you, instead of twenty. You kind of like fuck. yeah, and you got to you, you got to deal with you know what you know. You don't get the ideal people to help you, especially in front of the camera. You kind yeah. you kind of got to deal with what you have. Yeah, yeah, I like those scenes with the the girls. Is bad. I'm, I'm thinking of those scenes, and I let's just cut these because they're so bad. They're acting. Yeah. Well. But anyway, but Clerks was definitely inspiring for a lot of Clearly. people for that exact reason that, you know, look, you get a couple of your friends together, throw a few bucks at it, and you can make something. And uh, and the fact that he was able to sell it and get it distributed told everybody at that time, like, you know, you don't need the system. You can do this. So it was. Uh, That's right. It was great. DS man says, I'm super green to filmmaking and I don't know what the people go through to make it happen. But if you're listening to your story, I'm just eager to go through it. I definitely do it. No, my do late, it. my late great friend, Dennis Peters, uh, who is a really talented filmmaker. Um, <clears throat> who was started in LA, came to Connecticut. That's where I met him. We worked together for 20 years or so. Then he went back to LA and he passed away from ALS six years ago now, eight years ago. 2016 holy crap and um dennis used to say all the time and he would tell young kids like you know don't spend 100 grand on an education for this spend that 100 grand on film stock and, and camera rentals and go make it make have something have something and can you and i kind of had that philosophy in college we we, yeah. we walked out with stacks of tapes which is why I was immediately hireable. People were like, how'd you get all this experience? You're right out of school. I'm like, look at all these tapes. We yeah, just kept creating and creating and creating. Yeah, we had a professor that would basically yell at us if we were just sitting there doing yep. nothing. Like, no, you've got, you'll never have a time like this in your life. You've got all this expendable equipment. Go use it. And it's free to use. It's free to use. And you can, you can spend as much time as you need, you know, getting things wrong and then getting things right. So what are you doing here? Sitting, sitting, get out yeah. there and do something. Well, nowadays it's the opposite. Is, nowadays equipment is, is really inexpensive. You can hell, you can you shoot can it on your, phone. On, on your phone. Exactly. Yeah. You know, editing equipment is, is can be free if you know where to look. So yeah, no, if, if you're, if you're, if you're, you're looking to be a filmmaker, nothing's stopping you. Nothing. You know, just, just. I'm going to put out a piece of advice. Don't write beyond your means. If you if if you can somehow cause the end of the world with giant blue space lasers, and and crowds of people running away from it, if you can actually ha make that happen, then by all means write it. But don't don't write things like that are too big for what you can do. If you can only afford a quick stop at you know at all hours of the night and make sure that everything that you can write can only can happen in that quick stop that's yeah, a good point you know because then you get movies like the amazing bulk <laughs> well you know it, 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 that's a good point pete but there were times when i wrote our movie is called fuzz pockets um i remember Doug, we'd write these scenes, and Doug's like, "How the hell are we going to shoot this?" And I'm like, "We'll worry about that one. We'll worry about that. Let's just write the script we want to write, and then we'll we'll if we got to turn it back, we'll turn it back." Um, and but back then, you're right. We didn't have. I mean, if I could have sat home on a computer in my underwear, that thing, we would have beat those films out, and who knows That's what right. Happened, right? But I, you got to be ingenuitive too. And, uh, you know, again, when you surround yourself with people who are outside of of the filmmaking circle. So Doug is a, a, he's like a maintenance engineer. And I had all these driving scenes. And what's the cheap way to do a driving scene? Well, look at clerks. You sit in the back seat with the camera, right? Yeah. I didn't want to do that. I said, there's no way I'm doing that. I want the camera on the hood of the car looking into the windshield. 
and I want to be able to do ISOs on the people. There was no GoPros back then. There was nothing. We had to figure out a way to put this big honking camera on the hood of a freaking car without damaging the car because I didn't have the budget to have a crash car. So Doug, at his lunch break, goes out. He worked at a healthcare facility. He went out with it, um, and he measured the taper, the drop of the hood of the cars, like like dozens of cars. And he came up with an average of an inch and a half of a taper toward the front. So he built, remember that he built this, it looked like a biplane. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah this no, no, wood structure, that. right? So he, it was it was two-tiered so we could get the tripod head bolted through it. He yep. countersunk holes to put three different mounting areas for the camera and put wedges and foam so he would compensate for that drop so it would stay level. And then we roped it to. It would took what half an hour, forty five minutes. Oh, at to least, but, but it got us. It got us really good driving sequences. It, so basically, uh, you know, people were you, borrowing that thing for commercials from me. They're like, "Can I use that?" I'm like, "Look, it's not a real piece of equipment. I can't insure it." it, it what, right, right. Sign this waiver that if you wreck somebody's car, that's on you. If you dump the camera on the ground, that's on you. Um, but it worked, I and mean, a lot of people used it. But now, GoPro. Stick a suction cup on there, but, but uh, you know, but yeah, 1994. Clerks, 1994. We, we, certainly, we, we certainly have quite the uh, yeah, clerks was very inspirational for us and a lot of people, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, technology is going to turn into it's going to be yeah. it's going to be way different, way different. So I'm going to skip, um, you know, I started going over all the goofy movies we didn't see. Let's talk about the good ones now. Let's get, you know, trudge forward here. So the biggest hit of the year was Forrest Gump. Ah, uh, yes, Forrest Robert Gump. Robert Zemeckis is Forrest Gump. Now this one, I, I'm going to say something really unpopular right now. I'm not a big fan of this movie. I saw it That's, once. That's all I needed to see it. Everybody is entitled to, your, to their opinion. I... Uh, uh, entertainment is always subjective. Yep. But uh but yeah, no, that was that was an absolute phenomenon. It really was. Yeah, yeah to it, at some point ways it still is. I mean, people still quote it and talk about it. Yeah, there's me the whole line of Brown, the yeah. chain of seafood restaurants that came from it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, no, that, that that movie was that movie was almost unstoppable. And Tom Hanks got got an Oscar for that, didn't he? I think so um zemeckis might have too right um yeah. but i just remember everybody was raving about it i saw it you know maybe three weeks into its run after the people were just clamoring and i went and, and i was like okay it's oh it's okay i don't it just didn't blow me away like i wanted to be blown away and i was like okay it's, it's a good movie but right but it but it was also it was the forerunner to a lot of a lot of common special effects now like they actually made you new. Know, john kennedy turn and say, yeah oh, i believe he has to go pee yeah you know yeah. Think, which 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 was absolutely mind-blowing at the time you know no, just, really. just a level of uh, gary sinise's legs mm -hmm. you know so yeah and it was it was so seamless that you actually forgot that that was a special effect you know it's funny you bring up gary sinise it also tied him to this wounded warriors yes the cause that he's been a part of ever since too uh, you know, he set up foundations and he's a big spokesperson for wounded warriors. And I think that's yep. awesome that, you know, and it kind of came from playing this Lieutenant Dan. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But, you know, I mean, I'm not knocking the movie. I, I just. OK. <laughs> well, it could have been worse. It could have been more like the book. I think in the book, he actually goes into space. Oh, really? Yeah. And he's he, he he's on David Letterman. And, you know, there's there's all sorts of. That's you know, what's this? Yeah, uh, I like Robert Zemeckis too. I think he's a great filmmaker. No, oh doubt. no, he's absolutely fantastic. No um, Does have the he made the oh that Christmas Express movie? He he's kind Polar of obsessed. Express. Polar Express, yeah, he's 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 kind of obsessed with the dead eyed animation. Yeah, 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 he is. Carrie Elwes, I'd love to just like corner someday and ask him about Twister, which is nice. most of my guilty pleasures. So that year, we also... about... That's... No, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I thought I was I... going to ask him about Saw. 
because you know the 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 choice is take take the saw reach out and grab the cell phone pull it in and answer it or saw off my leg very it's similar really... to Captain America, nineteen ninety two, isn't it? Oh God, yeah. Cut off my arm or cut off his? I cut off mine. Um. So then you had, uh, God, there's so many good movies, and trying to get through this list without like, because I want to get to our top ten thing: Four Weddings and a Funeral, Heavenly Creatures, Hoop Dreams, Il Postino, or The Postman, Interview with a Vampire with Tom Cruise yeah. and Brad Pitt. When I was in film school, that was uh, I. I uh... I went. I went to, to New York Film Academy, which now, if you can afford it, I would say I would say go because they're accredited now, and you can actually get. Oh, are they really? Yes. The, yeah, they are. Not when I was there. Unfortunately. No, I know they weren't. Yeah. I did uh, for my um, my midterm. I did uh, an eleven minute short of The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, and um, and so you know when when uh, when I was editing the when when I was preparing that one. Was watching every goth movie that was out there because like well this is like the grandfather of goth stories <laughs> i guess i better get it right if i'm aiming for this audience so yes yeah, so i watched interview with a vampire and the crow another 1994 movie that yeah, well since you brought up the crow we'll throw the crow in there but yeah uh your, your raven thing is awesome oh, um you. the only thing is i remember helping you in post me and dan Leroy. ah uh, yes it would, to put Lenore in the frame and keep her because you kept changing her expression. Yep. And the registration of the film sprockets, it was constantly moving and it was like a one frame at a time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nowadays, that guys, be it started as one of us. It might have been Dan first or me first, but we needed each other because it took so long. And that was before, like now, it, After Effects has such good tracking that we could have just kind of masked that picture frame and it kind of would have stayed with it. Yep. But not. But back then, that was what two thousand, two thousand one. It was one frame. Two, yeah, 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 one frame at a time. It was like, Whoa. yeah, and it was, yeah. Um, what he's talking about is, I actually took since Lenore has got such a big presence in the story, I stole directly from The Simpsons and put a painting of Lenore with this this this, this beautiful actress named Jenny Guy. Uh, we so and she was up on the picture and the the, the narrator is constantly ooh, 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 you know pining over the over the over his lost love through the picture and we would i would constantly change her expression so depending you know sometimes she'd be smiling sometimes she'd be crying and these and because um we didn't i didn't have the budget to uh to actually make make paintings make actual paintings or, or large large posters of these things so we we did it digitally and uh yeah the film register the, the the registration of the film was off but you couldn't see it unless you put something stationary in front of it and it was it was this it was just earthquake yeah yeah back and forth oh moving on we still got a couple rows to go it's pat jr legends of the fall another uh it's pat written by quentin tarantino it's pat the snl thing i believe it is what let me go to the imdb yeah please do leon the professional i see a comment here from ds man can we get to leon the professional we just got to leon the professional and he says what you said to me off air gary Holtzman <laughs> just clobbers it yeah i don't tarantino didn't write it's pat come on it. no was he a script doctor did he write like two lines for it or something i don't know imd imdb is uh not accurate no it's, it's, it's not not helping me out uh we have wayne campbell's favorite movie leprechaun uh, uh little giants little women mary shelley's frankenstein which was a huge there's another Coppola movie he didn't he didn't direct it but he, he 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 produced it and he was wanting to um he was wanting to like revitalize all the the, the old universal monsters and dracula of course is a masterpiece mm -hmm. and, you know especially of old old oh, timey nice. You know, Gary Oldman, Oldman and like old old timey uh, film film special effects techniques, but uh, Frankenstein, directed by Kenneth Branagh, was very close to the book up until the end when it just completely goes off the rails. 
Yeah, and it didn't do it. It didn't do quite as well. So, and I guess I guess they uh, they said, nah, let's not let's not. Do yeah, it, it was a huge overproduced Frankenstein of a movie, actually, and um, terribly disappointing. But Gary Oldman getting back to Gary Oldman with Leon the Professional, Gary Oldman in Dracula, Gary Oldman in anything. Like I, I equate Gary Oldman to our modern day Lon Chaney. He's like the man of a thousand faces. Sometimes he's unrecognizable. Um, and no matter what role you put him in, the guy just completely immerses himself. He's amazing. He's one of the best actors of our time, I believe. Um, and it's probably oh no, yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. And doesn't get a lot of the 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 credentials that he should. I mean, everybody knows what a great actor he is, but it just seems like, I mean, he should be have stacks of Oscars. And uh, Mel Gibson's Maverick. The, I like this movie. Have you seen this movie? Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it was based off of an old TV show. Yes. Yeah, that was a nice, it was fun. It was just a fun uh, kind of a action comedy like that. Miracle on 34th Street re for, for the, 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 the remake. Okay, yes, Dark before guy. we go any further, according to IndieWire, Quentin Tarantino did an uncredited rewrite on its path. Holy crap. Yep. Well, they're they're he he and Julia Sweeney are are, are very close friends. Mm. Yeah, so I, it's, look, it's. I didn't see it, Pat. I just couldn't imagine that, that you could take that concept and stretch it for ninety minutes. Well, that was basically every Saturday Night Live movie after Wayne's World because, like, suddenly, you know, mm. a, a five minute idea can be stretched to ninety minutes. Well, let's throw. Let's see what what'll stick. We'll throw it all at the wall. Yeah, except the rest of them didn't have the cleverness or the world building that wayne's world had i mean no. you also didn't have dana carvey and mike myers behind them uh anyway so the miracle on 34th street i didn't even bother 33 naked gun 33 and a third which was horrible yeah they were the doctors didn't do it and it was just not good yeah yeah uh natural born killers this is another tarantino inspired he did a lot of the script writing on this one yeah um uh, it's a fun watch. It's definitely a product of its time. But I'll never forget, uh, our, it, we had this great film professor, Jamshid Akrami. Jamshid was, Jamshid was awesome. He was an Iranian filmmaker. And I remember he saw it before I did, and he came in, it is all style with no substance. <laughs> <laughs> in his Jamshid way. And yeah, I can agree with that. It's like a collection of scenes in a way, but um, it's fun. I love it. And Woody Harrelson's awesome. Yeah, he okay. he's another guy that's good in just about everything he touches. Absolutely. No, nobody's fool. North on deadly ground. Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> Once warriors. Police academy. I don't even know what number. Mission to Moscow. Uh. Pom Poco, I don't know what that. Is. And then we get to the granddaddy. We're in the peas now. Pulp Fiction. Yes, the one that really put him on the map. Yeah, you know he. The he Reservoir he, Dogs was a huge hit in '92, but but this... and, but with but but uh, Pulp Fiction, he was still the guy who made. You know he 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 was still he he wasn't a household name just yet. That was the one that really put him on the map, and it revived John Travolta's career. That was the big one. The big one was seeing John Travolta, Vinny Barbarino as an assassin. And just the in at the time, Quentin Tarantino, you know, uh, shocked everybody with the nonlinear storytelling. Yes. And people like it was so funny when remember back when that came out, the 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 reaction from I mean, you know, people who are into film got it. People who were not into film were like, "It's told out of order. I don't what I can't follow it." That's right, that's right. Yeah, just and missed a lot of the comedy. You know, missed the uh, the the what was Dan's favorite his the uh, his term for it. Um, I'm drawing a blank, but anyway, it was uh, it wasn't so overt with the comedy. Um, yeah, the yeah, really yeah, the comedy is much more subtle. It's, it's very subtle. Um, I wish I could think of that term that Dan used to use. Subversive, sub, you know. Um, but yeah, it was like nothing we'd had we'd seen. 
I mean, you you think about what we went through in the eighties. A lot of it was big spectacle blockbuster yep. kind of stuff. Right. And then come into the nineties and you get all these independent filmmakers, you know, coming out and, and putting their mark on things. And this one changed this one the basically game. took all the molds and, and just smashed them to hell. And it almost created its own genre of film because how many yep. Pulp Fiction knockoffs did we get for the next five years? Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, there was, I'm thinking. Of I've been looking, uh, you, you'll get, um, there's a Cine, Cineopolis near us. They they already did screen it, but it was one night only. Mm -hmm. um, Fathom Events should do it, but I don't think they're going to. Pulp Fiction. That's weird. I mean, it should be. There's a lot of these films that should be re-released. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, especially if, 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 if Hollywood's hurting for money, just dust off all these, these old films, put them in theaters for a couple of weeks, like they did during COVID, and just... You know, it's not going to cost them anything. Word of mouth can get all can can get these movies. And hell, Alien is coming out again. I know. Yeah, yeah. but that's a fathom events. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, yeah. But you know, they they do have. You know, you can rent a theater if you can get like ten people together, like we did for uh, Justice League. That's right. You know, put down twelve or fifteen bucks each, rent the thing, and screen it yourselves. Um, there's always that yes. option. But yeah, some and, and yeah. Pulp Fiction is one of those movies that actually helps being in a theater. Absolutely. Absolutely. I went to see that with the aforementioned Alice. Um, and we both walked out. It was weird. We walked out going, what What did we just see? Like, that was a movie you went home with you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, normally, a lot of movies now are like, okay, what's for what's for dinner? Mm -hmm. We walked out of that one. And first, you just you want to go take a shower. Especially yes. after the uh, Bruce Willis uh, scene in the basement there. Yep. Um, and then you got to process. What the hell did I just watch? Exactly. Oh. Yeah, it was that was genre defining and absolutely mind bending. And it was one of those things you had to see multiple times to, to get it. And, and then I think Tarantino let everybody down with his follow up movie, Jackie Brown, which was more mainstream. It was a, an adaptation of a Elmore Leonard novel. You know, I love Jackie Brown. I think it's a great film, but so many people were let down. They wanted another Pulp Fiction and they got a standard, you know, crime thriller. But right. Well, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, when you, when you, you know, you, you make such a big hit you know, of, of anything, you know, if, 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 if you've got such, you, 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 it's it's impossible to build up to to live up to the demand or or to the expectations. I mean, you know, George Lucas did that with the uh, Phantom Menace. Everybody was waiting seventeen years for a Star Wars movie, and then uh, you know, it's you, you can't always live up to the expectations that you set for yourself. No, but if if he was allowed to keep Jar Jar Binks in there and revealed that Jar Jar was actually a Sith Lord, a double agent, Misa, no, no. Yeah, there's a big theory out there that that's where he was headed with that. But the fans hated that character so much he just took it out. So on the flip side, you know, you have Tarantino that comes in, you know, creates this genre. And like we said, like his follow up was kind of a letdown for people. This director's follow up to some of his recent successes was a letdown for everybody, too. It was Ed Wood. Oh, I love Tim that movie. Burton. And I would argue that this is Tim Burton's best movie Far and away, his best. Movie. Oh, absolutely. Follow, followed by Pee Wee's Big Adventure. But yes, but the, but yeah, no. Ed Wood is absolutely is, is brilliant, and it's 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 the very least Tim Burton Tim Burton movie because it doesn't have the stripes and the spirals and the. It has the, some of those when like when they go to the amusement park. That's where he gets yeah. to do his Tim Burton art direction thing. You know, all those That's rides true. they go on look like Beetlejuice. That's true. That's true. But 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 I mean, the, the, the whole movie isn't isn't completely full of, of that. Um, no. And the performances by Johnny Depp and Martin Landau oh, are Landau so transformative amazing. that I I forgot I was watching Martin Landau. Yeah. And he, I remember he got the Oscar for that. And right before he was going to say, and this is for Bela, they cut him off. I know. Oh, that was that was that was brutal. But yeah, no, Martin Landau is absolutely exceptional in this movie. 
So, uh, yeah, to answer the question, absolutely nailed resurrecting Bella Lugosi. Um, I, I, this movie, I remember our classmate, Chris, telling us he saw it first and he's like, oh, it was boring, eh, it drags. So I didn't bother going to see it. Yep. It didn't last long. It bombed. But Trinity College in Hartford has a beautiful cinema. Yep. It's a converted church and uh 70 millimeter and they ran ed wood and i'm like i'm gonna go see it and i got up there i was supposed to meet a bunch of people i got up there late they were already in there so i just went and sat in the first seat i could find the theater was full and i was i'm glad i sat there by myself because i was swept away and became such a huge fan to this day i love ed wood it's one of my favorite movies of all time i think i actually have that one on dvd with all the extras and everything like that and of I course you know yeah Oh, I think the Blu-ray you can get for like six bucks right now on Amazon. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, Ed, Ed Wood is. I mean, that also inspired our our love of, of of. We actually got into Ed Wood. Yes, we did because of Ed Wood. Mm-hmm. And I got to um, say, the the recreations of the Ed Wood films in Ed Wood are darn near almost spot on yeah the 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 uh styrofoam uh uh, uh headstones headstones that that wobble and <laughs> yeah uh, johnny depp's performance was great i mean i was a little disappointed when i saw interviews with the real ed wood that he wasn't so yes i'm big and loud and but um but it, that's fine he made it kind of cartoony and that worked because you had to get on board with this guy, right? You, you're making right. a movie about the worst filmmaker of all time. You want to, but you want to be on his side. Yep. He had to be likable. And, and Johnny Depp nailed it. I mean, you're rooting for this guy. And I, I'll never forget reading an interview with Tarantino where he went to see it. And the whole theater was like laughing at the end when he's like, this is the one I'll be remembered for. And, and Tarantino was like, no, you're missing the point. This is inspirational. This guy, no matter what happened, all the negativity, all the, the haters, and all, he just kept plowing forward with a big grin on his face, right? Worst film you've ever seen. Well, my next one will be better. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it didn't phase him at all that people hated his work. He's just going to be, I'll do better next time. <laughs> That's because my voice is starting to fail me. <laughs> That's why I'm starting to sound like Christopher Walken. Uh, reality bites. Um, I didn't see reality bites. No, nope, that was that. That's that's got a huge cult following too. Yes, it does. Red, uh, Red Rock West. Red Rock West. I have to say it slow because I'm going to mispronounce it. It's <laughs> Red Rock West is a really underrated detective, like it's a noir film. Um, Nicholas Cage and Dennis Hopper. It's really good. Really, really good. Lara Flynn Boyle. Lara Flynn Boyle. Yeah, that, that, that's that's one if you can find it. Yeah, Vinegar Syndrome here in Connecticut did a 4K restoration um, and put it on, of course, 1080 Blu-ray, um, which you can get now. They actually have a plastic case version that just came out. It's 25 bucks or something. Highly recommend Red Rock West. Um, so, and Dennis Hopper had another movie in 1994. About a bus that was out of control. Speed. Speed. Yeah, that was that was another that was one that you couldn't you couldn't stop either. No pun intended. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that was one that, that 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 was in theater for a long time. That was that was another unstoppable movie. It really was. I mean, Sandra Bullock, Keanu Reeves, um, it, the, the the soundtrack. The soundtrack to speed. How many did things did we use it for? Oh God! Remember uh, Ben, our classmate Ben, used that soundtrack for everything too, because he made all those little action movies all the time. That's right. UPS man and stuff. But uh, yeah, Speed was was really awesome. Um, we lost Dennis Hopper too soon. I mean, now yeah. he's like eighty something years old, but uh, Dennis so Hopper was just. Uh, He's one of those actors, you know, if you if you you're walking by a TV and he's on, you stop. Yep. This is another Jeff Daniels movie, too. That's right. That's right. I forgot Jeff Daniels is in this. Uh, let's see. Richie Rich. Yeah, no. 
Uh, oh. Satan Tango, Satan Tango, Shallow Grave, Star Trek Generations, Star Trek Generations. Oof, where to start on Star Trek Generations? Probably the less said, the better. Yeah, <laughs> that was I a colossal remember. disappointment. That, that was well, yeah. The studio mandate was there, they just kept shoving stuff in there, and you know, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this other thing. And, and they and, were nervous about handing off the film franchise to the next generation cast, even though the next generation was one of the most popular television shows out at the time, clobbering it in the ratings in syndication. That's right. And and they were too afraid, so they had to have Kirk there to do a handoff. And it just it was it, so it was yeah. kind of appropriate that the Enterprise crashed and burned. Yeah, it was um yeah. But, it was like taking like a bunch of Star Trek Legos and spilling them all over the floor and just building some. Yeah. But I remember you and I went to see this movie. And we had <laughs> had a couple of beers. Mm -hmm. And this was the greatest movie we'd ever seen. Oh, we laughed our asses off. Oh, yeah. No, this this was great. And then we decided, hey, let's go see it again. And we were stone sober that time. And it was just, what the fuck am I watching? Uh-huh. That's right. I remember that now. Yeah. We didn't think it was that bad the first time we saw. It. Yeah, exactly. No, it's uh, again bringing up Red Letter Media. You got to watch Mister Plankett's reviews of all the Next Generation Star Trek movies, and starting, yeah, they are okay. starting with that with with, with Generations because it'll make you just wet yourself. They're so funny. Stargate Street Fighter, uh, Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter and Street Fighter Two in one year. Uh, really. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, The Client, The Crow. Goth Robocop. Uh, the Crow got, a lot, you know, that was uh, just the tragedy surrounding that movie with Brandon Lee was just. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's it's. And Alec Baldwin didn't do it. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, that was actually, I think. Yeah, it, it, did they actually get a real round into that gun or was it? Uh... Or was it just a, a, a straight piece of, of the blank? Shrapnel. A straight it was straight. like blank, wasn't it? But he was too close or something? I mean, something like that, yeah. But yeah, yeah it was... Um, but it does have the... Uh, because he passed away, it's also one of the first few uses of Photoshop. Yep. To get him back they in had the movie. Because they, they still had a couple of scenes to shoot. Yep. And it's, it's clunky as hell now. But at the time... You know, seeing seeing uh, you know, seeing him wa wandering around in an alley, which he clearly wasn't in, was was groundbreaking at the time. It really was. It was. I remember seeing that and going, "You can't even tell." You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In 1994, you couldn't tell. I mean, like you said, now it's obvious, but but still, it was it was you know, ab you know, it was it, it was still revolutionary. Yep. And now they're remaking it this year, or it's going to be released this year. And screw you, yeah, I can't remake that. That's that's sacrilege. So Dennis Hopper died on May 29th, twenty ninth, twenty ten. So geez, I didn't realize it was that long ago. I thought wow. it was like in the teens. Wow. Wow. If you want to see one of his first performances ever, he's on the season four Twilight Zone episodes. The year they went to the hour long episodes. Really. Yeah, I forgot the name of the episode offhand, but uh, yeah, he's great, and of course he's great in it. But he was like twenty years old, and crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to save this one for the very end. Then we got Flintstones, the Coen Brothers Hudsucker Proxy, which I have seen. It's been a long time since I have seen it, but yeah, that's that's that that that's a great cartoon of a movie. It's it, 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 when Charles Durning jumps out the window. <laughs> yeah, you know, or just 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 the 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 acting alone of being you know, in and that old timey style. It, yeah, that's it, what I love. It's it, that retro noir style. Um, or the uh, the 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 gag. Hang on, I'm going to stall here. Big deco clocks and everything. But Paul yeah. Newman's great in it, and Tim Robbins, of course. And I, I I I I love the gag where. Tim Robbins is is he's trying to explain his new product and he holds up a piece of paper. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the hula hoop. The it's for the kids. It's for, for the, the kids. kids. 
it's it's a great Cohen brother. It's again, it's got it's like a it's a, kind of a dark comedy. It's not it, it's that it's that dark humor. It's a black comedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're exactly. not into that kind of comedy, you're not going to like the film at all. Um, but I love it. I love everything the Cohen brothers do for the most part. They did have that one era where they made a couple of bad. They did that horrible movie with George Clooney and and what's oh, her name? oh brother, the, where art thou? No, the one it's a romance one. Uh the girl from the Verizon ads or whatever her name was back then. I the Lady Killers, there was that then there was a couple right there. They made like two or three in a row. I'm like, uh oh, have they lost their edge? But then they came back with no country for old men. They've been great ever since. Now they're retired, which sucks. Jungle what Book, Last Seduction, like? The Lion King. The Lion King, which I'm gonna admit now, I've never seen. Come on. I've never seen The Lion King. I've really? seen parts of it. I've never, I've never seen The Lion King. So it was re-released, weirdly, last year for its 29th anniversary. Very strange. And I took my daughter to see it in the theater. Um, and sitting there, wa watching her face take it in was awesome. And watching that film on the big screen again for the first time in like 30 years. Oh my God. It's a masterpiece. I it's, it was Disney when Disney went through that Renaissance in the late eighties, yeah. early nineties, they were at the peak of their powers for Lion King. And it's been all downhill since, um, my God, it's just, and it's the last, that was just the last hand drawn animated film they did. Home on the range actually is. Okay. Well, nobody watched that. Yeah. This was the last popular, <laughs> The last popular, yeah, the last, the last popular hand. hand drawn movie, yeah, and uh, just watching that nice, that beautiful hand drawn 2D animation. Oh, that's that, that on a that's giant screen there. in the AMC theater was just, and I, strangely enough, I got home about a week later, I was at Big Lots, and I always go look at their Blu rays because they always have like you can get a decent Blu ray for like three dollars, four dollars. They had the 4K edition of The Lion King for eight bucks. Wow. So I bought it. Yeah. And yeah. The hand drawn animation is, is, is unfortunately it is a lost art and I don't foresee it ever coming back because I don't either. No, it's sad. The little rascals, blah, the yeah. madness of King George, the never ending story three. Ooh, three. three. I didn't even know that existed. That. And speaking of bad, the next karate kid, Oof. Uh, the paper, I saw the paper back then, and I really liked it. Michael Keaton, Glenn Close. Yes. Uh, but I couldn't tell you anything about it right now, but I remember loving it. Um, I remember renting it. We watched it on VHS. The River Wild with Meryl Streep and Kevin Bacon. And the kid from really? Jurassic Park. Um, this really? movie's kind of fun, actually. Um. This this came out in like early ninety four in like fuck you February when there's nothing to go see. Okay. And the girlfriend was like, I want to go to the movies. And we're looking like they're that's when you had to open the newspaper and oh, look God, at the movie yes. listings. <laughs> right. You're calling movie phone. Yes, you're calling movie phone. And and I was like, Well, there's this Kevin Bacon movie I know nothing about. River Why it was a surprise. It was fun. It's fun. Okay. Basically, Kevin Kevin Bacon and uh, what's his face John C. Riley, in one I think it might be one of his first movie roles, um, are are escaped killers, okay. and they they go they're trying to get their stash down the down the Colorado River or something. I think it's the Colorado River, and they run into Meryl Streep and her family, and they basically they they using the kid try to manipulate him into uh, having a hostage so they have security to get and it's really you know and, and meryl streep's like an expert uh rafting you know doing sure, 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 sure. it's fun oh, it it's, it's definitely it's a rainy day watch it's not great but i mean the people in it are great david yeah, straight no, in good. it yeah. who was in it david straight there Character actor, he's in everything like Godzilla 2014. 
Uh, yes. Okay. Good night. Yeah. Good, good luck. In yeah, he's in sneakers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great character actor. He shows up in like everything. You know. Yep. He's got the raspy voice. Sounds like me right now. That's right. Uh, the Santa Claus with Tim Allen, uh, which I yes. saw for the first time last year and loved it. Teaching it. Teaching entire generations how to misspell Santa's name. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it was fun. I liked it. Um, yeah, you know, no, it, for, for it, a goofy it, holiday movie, it's fine. Yeah, you know, it, it's it, I I've only seen it a handful of times, and I'm not even sure if straight through. But uh, but yeah, no, no, no. That, that was that was definitely a good fun one as well. The Shadow with Eric Bodrin and Ian McKellen and Ian McKellen. Um, that was another kind of. Yeah, they were trying really hard to bring back the 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 pulp heroes. Mm -hmm. There was the shadow. There was the phantom. Yep. Uh, whose costume was made by Jim Henson's Creature Shop? Oh, really? I yes. But yeah, this was this was this was all the cash in on Batman. Yes. Because yep. you know, old old timey superheroes are are, are rocketeer. Are There's a bunch yeah, of them. The rocketeer. Although he's he's not really an old timey one, he was definitely no. Old. He was a fake old timey one. Yeah, but uh, they they were all trying to catch up, and I think the other studios that didn't have properties like Warner Brothers had all of the DC stuff. Right. Um. They 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 were going to the public domain heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it just it just no. Yeah. Didn't didn't Plus work. They weren't really well made films either, just as films. Yeah, they just they were they they had like the the crazy comic book style, but figuring ah, it's for kids, everybody will love it. Yep. And they didn't. Yep. The specialist with Sylvester Stallone, Time Cop with Jean Claude Van Damme. Time yeah, Cop. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> to live, Tom and Viv. Okay, now we're getting to the the end of the list here. Wes Craven's new nightmare. Which is that one was, Freddy Five or something like? Yeah, that was that was definitely up there. Yeah, that was that was uh, that that was like, what if Freddy Krueger was real, as opposed to you know being the over top the over the top comic you know, comic book villain that he was. The fact that you know that much about it is impressive. So yeah, they got the they you know people are having you know Robert Englund plays himself. Uh, all the actors play themselves and they're all having visions of Freddy and he comes out into the real world. And Oof. yeah. The, uh, after the second one, I was done with those. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not big on slasher movies. It's just me either. I'll watch the first one, maybe the sequel, but yeah, I don't need seven or eight of them with the same thing happening over and over. But those movies help bankroll. Oh, I know they do. Yeah, you know they, they 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 were a license to print money. They were they were really cheap to to produce. And, Jerry Winter uh, tells me all the time: if you want to bankroll something, make a cheap horror film, and then use the money from that to do what you yeah. really want. Yeah. Uh, White Wyatt Earp with Kevin Costner. Yeah, I didn't bother seeing that. About the that. same time as Tombstone. Exactly, and they were basically about the same thing. And yeah, there was a lot of once I saw it, <laughs> Tombstone came out the year before '93, and once I saw Val Kilmer as uh, uh, Doc Holliday, I'm like, nothing's going to top that. I'm not watching White Earp. Yep. Yeah, there, there was a lot of that going around in the '90s. You had like The Abyss, Deep Star Six, right? And there was a third one. I forget. I yeah. I forget what the third one was, but it was it was horror movies underwater. Not that the abyss falls into horror movies underwater, but everybody because it, it was the last of the to the party and it was about underwater mm -hmm. adventures. So people are just like, nah, we, we monsters underwater. We don't care. You know, and then I've Ar Armageddon and uh, Deep Impact were another one in the nineties that that it was oh right right the, the volcano and yeah. Uh... Yeah, it was all, all, all like the, the same premise that came out at the same time. Right. Yeah. Then they yeah they had the asteroid. Yeah, deep in yeah right right right. So um, they have two left. There's one that was great, and one that sucked so bad. A friend of ours made a documentary about it. 
which one should we go with first? I know, I, I, I know what the what the documentary one is. Let's save that one for last. Okay. True Lies. True James Lies. Cameron, yes. James Bond movie. I think his only comedy. Yeah, and and clearly he always wanted to do a Bond movie. Yes. Right. So it's it's a Jim Cameron a, movie, so it's a masterpiece, of course. It, it's it's to me, it's a spoof of a James Bond movie. Yeah, it's a very successful spoof of a James Bond movie, even to the point where he comes out of the water in a wetsuit, takes off the wetsuit, and he's got a perfectly pressed tux underneath. Yeah, which is very similar to the opening of uh, which movie was that? Goldfinger? Yeah, I think it was Goldfinger. Wasn't from Russia with Love. That starts with the maybe it was from Russia with Love. I don't remember which one. One of those early Bond films. He kind of does the same thing. He's got the duck and he. Um, yeah, I this was this was a breath of fresh air. I thought True Lies was true genius, actually. Um, Bill Paxton is the slimy used car oh, salesman. God, yeah, yeah, everybody in that is just it just knocks it out of the park. It's just a, you know, and the whole idea that that his wife, Jamie Lee Curtis, thinks he's just a boring ass computer salesman and who happens to be Jack to Jack to hell. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, you know, some great one liners in there, you know. The snow cone machine. That's right, yeah. Have you killed anyone? Yeah, but they were all bad. You know? <laughs> we're gonna die, aren't we? Yup. Look who's here, dude. Mr. Lundell, how are you, man? We got to get you on, and you know we're going to do these Sunday morning things pretty regularly. We'll have to get you on, Mr. Lundell. For those of you watching, was a longtime uh, friend and contributor to our old streams on Tuesday nights, and that brings us to the movie. So bad, a friend of ours made a documentary about it. Roger Corman's Fantastic Four ninety four. That's right. That's right. Still the best Fantastic Four movie that we've ever gotten. It's actually the truest adaptation of the Fantastic Four we've ever had. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, that the the movie that was made. Oh yes, Charlton Heston. Of course, we know Charlton Heston. Well, you really screwed the pooch this time. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, Roger Corman's Fantastic Four only yeah, made they, to keep the licensing rights. Exactly. Which and it, how did it wind up finding its way to to conventions? Because I know uh, well, you couldn't fans go to a knew about it. Or, or, or comic convention without without rubbing it without running into one of these. Well, a little backstory on that. Um, our friend Marty Langford up in Springfield, Massachusetts, made a documentary about it called Doomed. So if you're out there, you can find it. I think it's on Amazon Prime. It's called Doomed. Um, so Marty set out to make this documentary, and in it, in the process, he contacted me and he found out that there are only two existing uh film transfers of this movie oh wow to, to you matic three quarter inch there were only two that's right uh, that and marty got his light. hands on both of them and actually i have your decks they're at i can get them for you i know where they are now i had a flood i don't care anymore oh, okay. <laughs> um and what happened was the two the two transfers marty got his hands on them and one of them got eaten. <laughs> one, one of them got eaten in the tape deck. It was so old and so bad. It was sticky. Like it fell apart. So he sent the deck out to get cleaned. Um, second one worked. And he was able to transfer some of the footage, but not all of it. Um, so back in the 90s, clearly these were, someone had these and made bootleg copies of this movie on VHS and then DVD. So it got around. And it, it you know, it's got a cult following. People love it. Um, oh, but God. the documentary Doomed is is interesting because it's really, if you haven't, have you seen it? I've seen parts of it. Not clearly not enough of it, but yeah, it was. Uh, it's, it's really it, sad because the actors were all sold that this was going to be like Batman, right? Yep. And it wasn't. And they got screwed. And Stan Lee paid for it to never come out. Stan Lee's like, just Did he make really? it and bury it. Because wow. the whole the whole point of making it is Fox wanted to retain the rights to the Fantastic Four. So they had to make a feature, I think it was like within seven years. You have to make a new one within seven years or you lose the, the license. And they wanted to keep it. 
So they made this one it was a one million dollar budget. It was awful. And Stanley's like, "Don't ever let this see the light of day," <laughs> and paid to put it away. And then you know, people being people, it got out there. So yeah, yeah. It's I think my favorite part of that is that they actually had the Doctor Doom read his lines through the mask. Oh so he's God, like, that's right. Get them. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that, uh, sir? I, I said, get them! <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, they, they, didn't did. even, they didn't even ADR his dialogue. It was so bad. Uh, well, when you make a documentary, uh, you can ask for interviews. The one interview that uh, he was granted but had to deny was Stanley himself because they wanted something like, I think, 12500 bucks or something like that or the one hour to interview him. Which we ran into with the Charlton project too. We wanted Stan to say one line in our Charlton documentary, and we found out we'd have to pay. So mm -hmm. now we can just AI Stan. Yeah. <laughs> Let his estate come get us, right? If we ever finish that, Eddie, damn. There's no such thing as bad press. There's no such thing as bad press, Eddie. I learned that in Ed Wood. All right, let's have some fun as we get to the end of this. Let's do our top. 10 list so we're going to put our top 10 with an honorable mention uh i don't know if you've given this much thought if any i haven't but uh i can certainly say in no particular order although i would probably put pulp fiction at number one well let's start at the bottom let's get let's your honorable you thought know that you gave it away all right we'll see you next week everybody uh we'll see you next tuesday <laughs> What would you put as your 11th, your honorable mention film? Then again, these are not like critically acclaimed. These are not like the best made. These are ones that you like to watch the most. These are your favorites. I'm going to say with Star Trek Generations because it's, 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 it's crappy. Whoops. It's, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's sad. Oh my, um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's but if it's on, I'll watch it because it's better than current Trek. <laughs> so, Mister Londell, this would not make your top eleven, is what I'm guessing. <laughs> Wait, what is this? <laughs> oh my God, we forgot oh, Shawshank we didn't, Redemption. We didn't How did I miss Shawshank, Shawshank Redemption? It's right here. Oh my God, how did I forget that? I'm going blind. These glasses don't the work. That, that, that single-handedly keeps TNT in business. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess I got to crawl through, crawl through 500 yards of piss and shit now for forgetting that. Frank Darabont's masterpiece. I mean, my God. It's coming out. I think they're putting it back out in cinemas. I think Are that's it. Really? I think it's a Fathom events if it hasn't already gone by. Uh, but yeah, Shawshank Redemption. I'll make it up to you, DS man. I promise, because it's going to be on my list here. Uh, Jesus, how did I skip over that? We both. I guess did. I was too anxious to make fun of Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, shame on us. Wow, I'm going to flog myself with a broken bottle. So my whatever you oh, do in uh, your free time is your is is your business, dude. Thank you. My honorable mention is Dumb and Dumber. Um, I love it. I watch it at least once a year. It makes me laugh my ass off. I just watched it on a plane recently. And you know, when you're on a plane, you don't want to like, ha, ha, ha. you're like, you know, shaking and trying to hold back your laughter and you start tearing up and yep. it's not start coming out. Yeah, that's that was me. Dumb and Dumber still just makes me laugh my ass off. What's your number 10? Number 10. Let's see the let's let, let's see the posters here. Um, hmm. Next Karate Kid, isn't it? Oh, probably. Or um, it's Pat. It. I was just gonna joke. It's Pat. Um, <laughs> I forgot another film I'm looking at right now too. Sailor Moon the movie. Really? That's your number ten? No, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, the movie that you said that you forgot. Oh no, no, no. It's right in the middle. I was gonna mention it next to Pulp Fiction and forgot. I'd say probably throw the Santa Claus in there. Okay. Let's get that up here. 
Number 10 for Pete, the Santa Claus. For me, Clerks. Okay. Because Clerks, you know, at the time stood for a lot of things and was groundbreaking and super inspirational to a bunch of poor college kids like we were. But um, 30 years later, mm, man, yeah. people don't talk like that. That's true. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine. Um, you know what? Because it's it's so beautifully shot, I'm, I'm not going to comment on the the uh, the content of the movie. But put Interview with a Vampire up there because it is beautifully shot. It really is. And there we go. Ba -ba -ba. Come on. Ah. All right, number nine for Pete is Interview with a Vampire. Uh, that was such a remember. I mean, all the girls in school. Were like, oh yeah, yeah. They all had the case of the thigh sweats for for, for <laughs> the thigh sweats. <laughs> Happy lap. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. this is before I realized that Brad Pitt could actually act. Because I was like, oh god, it's a pretty boy movie. You know, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Like, oh, plus it also has some again groundbreaking effects when when they 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 turn Claudia into a vampire. Oh yeah, all of the 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 locks of hair suddenly twirl and get longer, and 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 the blood drains from her face, and her teeth get longer. And the, ILM that's a movie. had such a problem with that. That's a movie that you know I had to grow into because I had to like mature first. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, when I was just a college kid, I was like, yeah, screw that. Pretty boy movie. I mean, you see that. My number nine is Speed. Okay. Because it's just a relentlessly fun action movie. And when they jump the bus from one bridge oh, to the yeah. other, how could you not love that? As a kid who grew up on the Dukes of Hazard, come on. Come on. Looks like we're the Duke boys are in for some trouble. Well. Is it in this list? I don't know. I didn't no, make I, like, this list. Is what like I just put in 1994 movies. There could be some missing. I'm sure there are some missing. Uh, this was the most comprehensive one I could find. Some only had like 10 movies in it. Some had like 15. This had like 50. So um, I'm sure there's some that aren't on here. But all right, number eight for you, Pedro. Number eight. Um. Put Forrest Gump up there. Foresty Gumpy. Forrest, Forrest Gump. Nice. That that's that's a good spot for it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Considering my personal view on it. I'm gonna put a movie that I hadn't seen until I think last summer. Hoop Dreams? No. Oh. Uh, Hoop Dreams is awesome though. Um and I just got the the Blu-ray and um I love this movie, Red Rock West. Red Rock West. It just it feels like a Coen Brothers movie. It's got that same, you know, noir. The you know the the kill my wife gone bad. You know the 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 domino effect from that. It just, oh yeah, just wrong wrong guy in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, no, it is ludicrous. Of Mr. It's ludicrous that's but that's what. So so is blowing up a shark with a with an oxygen tank. <laughs> it's absolutely impossible but just go with it yeah exactly yeah. jeff bridges and Tommy. oh yeah yes and his, his dad is in that as well jeff All right, his dad's best part ever is seinfeld when he's that cranky old gym teacher ah <laughs> i love world's that. best dad yeah, that's right what do you got for number seven? Uh, let's see the list. Let's see the list. This is interesting. Our, our list so far is so different. We haven't had anything similar. I'm going to put the mask. Oh, sorry. You need more posters? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to say uh, let's, let, let's put the mask up there. Again, I'm doing this for the effects. Right. As a, as a post-production effects guy, I can see that. Why you would do that. Yeah, because it's, it's – again, that was ILM at – at its top form, you know, having done photorealistic dinosaurs, that's now do photorealistic uh, Tex Avery cartoons. And yeah, oh, yeah. And, and 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I didn't want to step on you. You weren't. Oh finished. no, no, and and it, it's got nothing to do with the with the the comic book that it actually came from. They they watered it down tremendously, but oh yeah, it is its own thing. But it, in you know the days of early CGI, it was a must watch. Yeah, you know, I remember that. I I the only reason I wanted to watch it was for like you as you uh, astutely point out the Tex Avery style effects. You know the big. Wah, the big mouth and the eyes popping out and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And it was it was cool, man. It was cool. Uh, what are we on? Seven? My number seven is a Jack Ryan thriller with Harrison uh -huh. Ford. Clear and present danger. And maybe it's because I just watched it like a month ago. So it's fresh in my brain. But I really like that movie. I think the two, well, the first three Jack Ryan movies are amazing. But I really I like the two with Harrison Ford because I like how he plays Jack Ryan versus Baldwin, mm. in the first one. Um, but Hunt for Red October is one of the. Oh best. no, that's that 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 that's another that the the effects the audio effects I believe were done here in Connecticut at Sonalist. Oh, it's Studios. Sonalist Studios. Yeah, that's because of the naval base. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. What do you got for number uh, six? Oh. Put the crow up there. The crow. If crow. I can find it here. The crow. And did you see that in the theater when it came out? No, I missed it. Oh, okay. I was dating a girl who was absolutely obsessed and had me sit down and watch it. Like, oh, this isn't as bad as I thought. No, I really liked it. I went to see it in the theater. I I, I really wanted to go just to see how they were going to make the movie without, you know, finish it without Brandon Lee. I was just yeah. interested in those shots specifically and I, you know i enjoyed the movie it's really really well done oh yeah exactly um uh, my number six my number six is for the kids it's the hud sucker proxy hud sucker proxy i'm gonna go hula hoop after this nice <laughs> i didn't need to see that oh i'm sorry oh no you can't unsee it now oh my god I love John Candy. Oh, man. You know, it's after he died, it made planes, trains, and automobiles that much harder to watch because he's such a lonely, sad sack in planes, trains, and automobiles. And, yep. the, you know, I love John Candy, man. Candy man? The John Candy man. Yeah. If, maybe if we say John Candy man three times, he'll come back to life. But then he might be a murderous, rampaging ghost. So maybe we shouldn't. Yeah. All the bees and. Yeah. How old? <laughs> we got to date ourselves. Well, if you cut me in half and count the rings, I would have been 25 in 1994. 22. Yeah. 22. And the world was in front of me and I was less bitter. <laughs> well, but I also think back to like how naive we were. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. It's all part of growing up. Come on. Everybody goes through it. All right. Uh, what's your number five? Now we're getting into the nitty and the gritty. Now we're getting into the good stuff. Um, yeah, now it's going to get hard because it's 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 uh, it, it's already been hard. Do you know how hard I scribbled this before we went on? And I have I'll, without giving it out, you can't see, but I've I've crossed out so many and changed things. Around. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is a hard year. This was a this banner. A very hard, hard. Yeah, yeah, there was so many, so many good, so many good movies that came out. I mean, how do you game. top Beverly Hills Cop Three? You just with, don't. with Street Fighter Two. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> we remember Rodney Dangerfield in everything. We yes. grew up with Rodney Dangerfield. Yes, that's right. He's in that. He plays the dad, doesn't yep. he? In the in in that uh, sitcom bit. Yep. Yeah, when he's saying like the raunchiest things on the planet, and and, and there's there's a laugh track. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, I do remember. I remember. Pepperidge Farm remembers too. Pepperidge Farm doesn't forget. No, it doesn't. Pepperidge Farm is going to talk unless Pepperidge Farm. Pepperidge gets Farm a, works for the government. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you got for number five? Huh. 
Well, now it's getting really difficult. Um, you know what? I'm going to say put True Lies up there. True Lies, number five. Let's see if I get True Lies. De -de 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 boom. Now, uh, you double up. Because number five, uh, I, I also have True Lies. Okay. I don't think I can double it up. That's okay. Can I, up? I can't double you up. Oh, no. No. All right. Well, it's okay. We, we both have True Lies for number five. And I I remember my like, God, we killed this too. This soundtrack as well. We used Oh yeah, this soundtrack is genius. Same and, guy uh, did the uh, uh Fidel, I believe is is this guy's last Brad name. Same G, guy Brad did Fidel. Uh, yes, Terminator. Terminator, exactly. And a little bit of trivia. The the Harrier jump jet that's in True Lies made an appearance in the Avengers. Really? Yeah, it was the same prop that that, that Hulk rips the wing off and, and throws at Thor. Really? Yeah, same same prop. Oh, that's cool. I did not know that, Ed. That's some weird wild stuff. All right. Uh, we're on number four. And again, remember, these are the ones you watch the most. It's not necessarily the critic's choice. Police Academy Mission Moscow, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, let's go with Shawshank. Shawshank Redemption is your number four. Whip four. My number four is a movie I forgot to bring up. It's a little ditty directed by Robert Redford. It has not yet made it to Blu-ray or streaming, really, or anything. I know you oh. can pay-per-view it, but quiz show. Quiz show. That's, Quiz that, show that's, is a phenomenal, wow. phenomenal film with uh, Ray Fine yep. in the lead role and John Turturro. Um, man, it's it's a true story about a rigged television game show in the 1950s um, yeah. called 21, where they were yeah, feeding the answers to Ray Fine's character. Um, because he was good looking and he came from, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a rich family a, a what it would call of the influential family. Uh, so they wanted to keep him on TV. So they kept feeding him the answers. And wow, the guy who was the previous champion, who was John Turturro's character, was a schlub from Brooklyn who did study and did know the answers. And they they forced him out. And he took he took it to court and he won and he exposed the whole game show. It's really 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 good movie. So Mr. Lundell agrees. Yeah, quiz shows. I've been uh, pinging Bill Hunt over at Digital Bits every couple of months, going, "Where's quiz show? Where's quiz show? <laughs> Is anybody going to do it?" In fact, I'm going to go down to Vinegar Syndrome in the next week or two, and I'm going to ask them if they can acquire the rights and restore it. Oh, Juliette Lewis, really? Are we happy for Robert Downey Jr.? Absolutely. It is on DVD. Quiz show. I have the DVD, but the problem with the DVD is it's four by three letterboxed. Oh, so no. On a widescreen TV, it's a tiny little thing in the a rectangle in the middle of the screen. It's off. Awesome. So, somebody made a region-free uh, Blu-ray. I saw that, yeah. But every time I see that and then you get it, it doesn't play. Ah, it's too bad. Yeah. All right. We're on number uh, three is my voice to three. give out. Scroll down a little bit. Do, 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 do. Richie Rich. Yeah, Time Cop. No, um, Time Cop the musical. Uh, Frankenstein. 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 Where are we here? Frankenstein. Where is it? Da, da, there it is. That would be Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, mind you. Yes. That's piece number yeah, three. It, it, it's, a, it's a great movie until it goes off the rails and just. You can. You, oh, the you third can act. Yeah. The, the very tail end of the third act. I mean, you can, you can forward until the. Uh, you can forward till the you see the the uh, 
the scene on the boat again. You go from yeah. the, the wedding scene right to the ending on the boat and just skip that that section in the middle. <laughs> I'm going to pick, uh, as my voice is really giving out on me here, Shawshank Redemption. Uh -huh. got so you can double up. No, I ran out to the internet and got a photo and imported it. Oh, okay then. You're muted. I muted so I could cough. Sorry. Oh, um, okay. I'll do that with True Lies too at, at the end. So, uh, number two. Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Ed Wood what? What would he do? Edward D. Edward. Ed. Ed D. Ed, Ed, you know what I'm trying to say. Edward D. Wood Jr. That's the one. <laughs> well, you're killing me here because my number two is also a little movie called Ed Wood. So let me just save that. I think I got this. All right. Choose file. I am also picking uh, Ed Wood as my number two. Pull the string, man. Pull the string. Pull the string. I had fun when we did that, when I played uh, played Johnny Depp playing Ed Wood, playing our professor <laughs> in our tribute. What was all the Angora that you were wearing? That's what it was. So I'm guessing your number one and my number one also match. Plup Fiction. I don't know that one. Plup. Was that 1994? Uh, maybe. It's, it's... <laughs> it was the clear and obvious choice. Plus, you let the cat out of the bag at the very beginning. Yeah, well, I like cats. Nice going, Pedro. So, my number one is a little film I like to call Pulp Fiction. <laughs> So our our top couple are almost the same. So we have Shawshank three and four. Yep. Um, we have the same number five. So our top five is pretty darn close. Pulp Fiction, Ed Wood, Shawshank, uh, True Lies. You have Frankenstein. I have Quiz Show. So that is our list. So our honorable mention: Star Trek Generations, Dumb and Dumber. Our number ten: The Santa Claus and Clerks. Number nine, you have Interview with a Vampire, I Have Speed. Number eight, Forrest Gump, Red Rock West. Number seven, The Mask, Clear and Present Danger. Six, The Crow, Hudsucker. Number five, we both have True Lies. Number four, you have Shawshank, I Have Quiz Show. Number three, you have Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, I Have Shawshank. Number two, we both have Ed Wood. Number one, we both have Pulp Fiction. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, I am I keep uh, telling my daughter, like, pick a movie. You see that shelf over there? There's not a crappy movie on there. Okay, Cannonball Run's on there. Oh. Other than that. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Martin Landau. Again, transformative role. So, Very anyway. little makeup from what I remember. Yeah. I think it was the nose and it the eyebrows. did do the nose and, and the oh, and, and the chin. It did do the nose and the hat. Yeah. <laughs> the chin. He had a little dimple on his chin. Yes. But very little makeup. Yeah. It, no, well, he... It was, it was, it was, it was, you had to be double-jointed and Hungarian. <laughs> Is that how you do that? My how do, you, how do you do that? Just crazy. So, yeah, absolutely. Send the link to... Um, uh, if you're on X Twitter, you could find us at Geek Time Net. Uh, in fact, I should put those things up. Definitely send that over. Uh, I forgot to put all this crap up. I'm so rusty at this StreamYard stuff. I totally forgot. So that's what we are on the X's and the face plants and the Instagrams that we never use. But I do use X all the time. So anyway. Um, as you can hear, I'm about jot 
So this was fun. It was. Love to come up with a topic for our next stream. Next Sunday, I won't be available because I will be with the daughter. Um, but the week after, we'll have to come up with a good topic. Yeah, I, I think every, topic every, every, every two weeks sort of thing isn't too bad. We skipped last week because it was Easter. That's right. I hope everybody awesome. had a good Easter. Yep. Lots sure. of eggs. You ate eggs? <laughs> we had eggs. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's it for, for us, I guess. Uh, uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else, Pete, before no, we go? Nothing. It was a very good year. It was a very good year. It, it really was. was. Good, I don't think we'll ever... movies. I'm sorry? It's a good vintage of movies. It was a nice cross section. It really was. I mean, I was originally thinking making a one of these charts by genre and ranking them that way, but that would have been too messy. Uh, but you're right. I mean, there was great comedies, great action, great horror, great drama. Indeed, and it's 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 as these as as the the years tick on, we're going to find very very few. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever years. see it. We'll ever see a year like this ever again. I really don't. I mean, 99 could probably be argued as the last year that was similar to this. Yeah. Um, I mean, once we got into the, the aughts and the teens and now the 20s, it's just. Not quite. Not quite there. No. No. It's sad. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, you know, because people do like to do retro. And everything old becomes new again. That's true. And maybe we'll have one of these. Oh, to me, the studios have to be able to to trust the auteurs. They've got to let the auteurs back in. Because the ones that are out there now are aging. And, and when they're gone. Yeah. When they're yeah, gone. No, nobody, nobody's coming mm -hmm. to mind. I mean, like, take a while. Nice. <laughs> nice yeah taika waititi is some this this comes to mind is like you know they kind of trust him for a style but he kind of shot himself in the foot he's a one-trick pony to me yeah um he was a breath of fresh air but now he's quickly becoming stale um i i, I think more of a guy like robert eggers mm. um you know if he can get out of the horror genre i know he did the northman which was basically an action film but you know, he's back to horror with Nosferatu yeah, because right. he's, he's an atmospheric director. I mean, the thing with his films, the atmospheres are incredible. I mean, The Witch was just atmospherically just it just pulls you in and won't let you go. That's right. Right from frame one. And The Lighthouse is very similar, even though The Lighthouse is really a hard watch because it's creepy as hell. Mm. Those guys are, you know, well, Deli, uh, Denny Villeneuve. Villeneuve's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's another one that they, yeah, and Christopher Nolan. These are these are guys that they that they kind of trust. Here, here's a dump truck full of money. Right, go do your thing. Yeah, but again, Villeneuve is he's. I would like to see him do something outside of sci-fi. Uh, apparently, he's got two more coming before the next Dune movie. Yeah, although this Dune movie is making so much money, I think they're going to say you're making Dune three first. Mm -hmm that's what the studio is going to mandate. They're going to tell them to make the third one because they're going to bank it while it's hot. They're not going to want to wait six years. That's true. You know, and then Timothy Shamalama Ding Dong is going to be like, you know, 40 <laughs> or 35 or yeah, he'll probably yeah, still he'll... look like 18 though, like Michael J. Fox, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He'll put, but he'll probably age out of the part. I will. I will look for that immediately. Cinephile on the spectrum. I will follow. Oh, very nice. Oh, Weird Al. I felt bad. Weird Al, I saw him. He was in New Haven walking down the street. I think he was going to play Toad's Place or something. But he was walking down the street, and he was probably about 100 yards in front of a bunch of us. This is back probably around this time, 94, 95. And all these people start going, it's Weird Al, yank a dick. Weird Al, Ooh. yank a dick. And it, like they were killing him, and I just felt so bad. He just put his head down and kept walking. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh man. Man. yeah, come on, leave him alone. He does song spoofs. Leave him alone. <laughs> Funny story about Weird Al. 
I actually did some animation. For, I remember uh, some, right? some some background animation for one of his music videos. Uh, it was it was on uh, Straight Out of Linwood, which the the backside of the, of the disc is a DVD, so you can put the the CD in a CD player, but you put the other side into a DVD player. And uh, a friend of mine named Dave uh, was doing he he had a popular uh, Newgrounds cartoon called I won't even say the name because that will probably get us we'll probably get hit with a a strike. Ah, oh, you can say uh, it. Retarded animal babies. I remember that. Yeah. So basically, he he got contacted. He got contacted by by Al's people to do all uh, to do an animated music video for one of his original songs called Virus Alert. So if you look up on YouTube, Virus Alert, Weird Al. Um, but it's it's one of his original songs. And so Dave came to me and asked, "Can you do some three D backgrounds? Because I do I, I do three D work occasionally." And um, and so I did I, I did like rows and rows of, of uh, office cubicles and 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 I, I did a lot of the backgrounds. You can you can kind of tell because they they'll, they'll go from hand drawn to very very pristine lines. And uh, there there was also a video game based on the music video, based on the song. That was it was kind of like it was kind of like um, Gauntlet. Where you had to just walk around and shoot and shoot uh, antivirus discs at all of the computer viruses that were spawning all over the office. And I did I did music for that and I wrote it. I That's when you worked for the days. video game company, yes, right? It worked for a video game company at the time. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah, going yeah. to your uh, your office party at the amusement park. That was fun. Dune three will be a disappointment. Yeah. I saw Shamale is already already uh, hired for uh, Dune Messiah, so we'll see. It's the studios; you know what they want. There's not a creative among them. Nope. What's that? What's he saying, uh, Raiders? There's not one brain among them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, oh, Stacy. We used to have Stacy on the show. Stacy was great. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not sure if we have a that. handy nerdette. I have to think about that. If, think if you know any, send them <laughs> right. our way. There you go. <laughs> now we could reach out to Stacy. She might not be doing anything. So, anyway. Um, yeah, let's sign this puppy off. The joyfulness is over. Until next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the flippity flip. Yes, I think though. No. Yes, the, the joyfulness is over. The joyfulness is over. Thanks for watching Geek Time TV. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe, make sure to check the little bell icon anytime someone from our network drops new content here. Want some Geek Time swag? Check out the merchandise available in the Geek Time TV store, linked in the channel description below. Share Geek Time TV with friends, and as always, thank you for your support. We'll see you soon.